as you guys probably have noticed, things are getting off to a really weird start for the 2020s. And <laughs> we we're almost halfway through the decade and each and every single year, it seems like it's getting weirder and weirder. With that being said, I wanted to start a new series talking about some of the things that I'm doing personally, not only with my truck, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it in a few of the other videos, but also how to prepare myself to make sure that I am able to get home on a daily basis or if I need to get out of where I'm at, how to do that as well, coming up. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we are going to be talking about a new series that I am doing with the channel, specifically talking about everything that I've got going on with my truck, some of the changes that I've made to my truck over the last few years and some changes that I will be making in the future as well. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about my rooftop tent in upcoming videos, some of the attachments that I have on my truck as well, why I have them there, so on and so forth. But before we get into any of that type of stuff, I wanted to talk about ways to make sure that you are prepared to defend yourself trying to get home on a daily basis. If you haven't already seen it, I've done one video on the best budget truck gun. And in that video, I did talk about this particular gun. This is the PSA Dagger. And I had a lot of comments about what was going on in that video saying that if I'm going to have a, vi uh, a pistol or a gun in my truck or my vehicle, it's going to be a rifle. And I didn't necessarily disagree with that, but uh, typically something like this is going to be very easy to conceal inside of a vehicle. It's going to be uh, fairly benign when it comes to different laws in different jurisdictions because you can get obviously smaller magazines for a semi-automatic pistol. So that's why I started off with this particular pistol. Obviously there's been different red dots put on here as I test different red dots but this is one that I do keep in my truck we'll talk about uh, the reasons for that coming up here in just a second but moving forward I did want to talk about some of the comments in that previous video saying that if I wanted to have a firearm in the vehicle it would be a rifle and I hear what you had to say and I went ahead and took the time to pull a rifle together that I think that most people could agree with as being a rifle that they would comfortably use in their vehicle moving back and forth to work, to home, on vacation, going to see family in different states, whatever the case may be. And I'll also show you the setup that I have for my truck as well and some of the different precautions that I'm taking while I have that firearm with me. So let's dive into it. Let's talk about the rifle. I've already talked about it once in the previous video, talking about the folder. And this is the rifle that I have pulled together. It is extremely inexpensive, uh, barring a few of the additions that I've put to this. Um, I'm not saying that you need to pull together a rifle just like this. I'm not saying that these components are the ones that you need to have. These are the things that I've pulled together and the reasons why we'll be talking about that in this video. So why an AR? You guys know that if you've been with the channel for any period of time, I love AKs. I'm a huge AK fan. I run two gun competitions with AKs. I go to Kalash Bash and Kalashnikon. I'm trying to get to Red October and AK Masters in the future. I love AKs. I think AKs make you a better shooter. That's a topic for a different video. But I also understand that this is the American rifle. And if I want something that I'm going to use to have to defend myself, to either fight to get home or, you know, bug out, I know that parts compatibility with a rifle like this is going to be a lot easier. Uh, ammo compatibility is going to be a lot easier. And then magazine compatibility as well. So those are the main reasons why I went ahead and set up a truck gun in an AR platform. 
Now, this is a very, very budget rifle uh, that I put together, and just the rifle alone, I'm not talking optics, lights, the Law Tactical folder here, not talking about any of that type of stuff. I pulled this together for $305. Holy cow, Mark, how did you pull a rifle like this for $305? I search the internet for really good deals. I sign up for newsletters talking about daily deals and blim deals and stuff like that. That's exactly what I did here. This is a 16 inch Freedom Upper build kit that came with all of the lower parts kits and the Magpul furniture for $275. In addition to that, last year, PSA was running a deal on their stealth lowers that were $30. So I bought four of them at the time and I knew that I was going to be building ARs to test certain things. So why not just go ahead and buy a few of them and be ready to go. So $275 on the complete upper with bolt carrier group, charging handle, lower parts kit and Magpul furniture, $30 for the lower, it's $305. So there is that piece of it. Now from there, we do have a law tactical folder. I put this on here for a previous video talking about this, comparing it to a immaculate folder. Uh, it's a Chineseum knockoff. It went as well as you should expect it to have gone. But uh, I went ahead and left it on here. And the reason why I left it on here is when I'm out in Wyoming driving around, I like to keep this folded and at my floorboard right next to my leg, ready to go should I need to get after some coyotes or something like that. So that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and left it on here. This is going to be a $250 upgrade to this rifle. So now we're already pushing, um, what, call it $355, or $555 if I can do my math right. <laughs> and then uh, moving forward, we'll talk about the other additions to that. The optic is from Tacticon Armament. This is their Falcon first focal plane one to six LPVO and I went ahead and put this on here because I am testing this I'm not saying that you need this particular one There are other more budget friendly options to keep this whole setup under a thousand dollars But I went ahead and threw this on here for testing purposes and it has a lot of great attributes We'll talk about the specifics on this in a separate video, but this is $399. So we are now jumping up to uh, $955. And then lastly, the Streamlight ProTac HL. This is a thousand lumen, I believe it's thousand lumen light on here with a tape switch, got some goon tape on there. That's another $135. So we're looking this complete setup as it is right now, give or take $1,200. Uh, a little bit more expensive after I tallied everything up than I had originally thought. I thought it was going to be more like $1,000, but at the end of the day, um, you can cut a lot of corners on some of the different options that I've put on here and keep it under $1,000. So you do you, uh, but what I can say is with this particular setup, I went ahead and did things in such a manner that should my truck get broken into and this get swiped, I'm not going to be out so much money that I uh, would be overly upset about. I purchased the light, the optic was sent to me, uh, so I really have no money involved in this. So. If I was to take this off and put something a little bit more budget friendly, like a uh, just a standard, I don't know, SIG Romeo 5 red dot on here, um, then you're looking at a setup that's probably more like $700. And I, yeah, $700 is a lot to lose, but I wouldn't be overly upset about that in comparison to losing, say, like my... BCM Mark II with D-Ball D2 and EOTech EXPS3 and so on and so forth. So that's why I have done a very, very budget option. 
In addition to this, um, one of the great things that I liked about this particular setup is this is going to be a mid-length gas system, so I'm not going to have as much recoil, um, and I can stay on target a little bit easier with this particular upper. Uh, it is a 1 and 7 twist, 5.56 five, upper, um, 4150 steel barrel, like I said, mid-length gas system, and then it's got the fixed F stamp front post, uh, A2 style front post. So I have the ability to remove this and still use iron sights. But as you can see, I don't have a rear iron sight. That's one thing I just haven't put on here yet. That is coming. That's going to uh, get added on here. And one other addition that I don't have that is almost a must for this type of setup is a sling. Don't have my sling on here, but uh, I've got one. It's going to be uh, the Vickers sling from Blue Force Gear. That's the one I really do like. That's what's going to get put on here. I've just been lazy. So um, go ahead and hit me up in the comments about that. Okay, so uh, there is the rifle setup. Let's talk about how I have it set up in the truck. All right, so I'm gonna stay out of the frame as much as I can, but I'm going to go ahead and describe everything that's going on with this particular setup. This is going to be the Gray Man Tactical rifle rack system that they have. And uh, this was also sent to me, so just keep that in mind. Uh, these systems can be a bit pricey, so if this is not something that you're interested in, just keep that in mind and how you're going to set things up for your particular uh, rifle setup. But I'm gonna get a lot more close-up uh, footage for you guys so you can see how it's completely set up and so on and so forth. But what this does have is a buttstock plate down at the bottom to retain the buttstock so the rifle's just not flapping around in the uh, top clamp system. It is also going to have some G-Code Scorpion uh, magazine holsters. And then uh, this particular IFAC is going to be a MyMedic IFAC that I added to. This is a large IFAC, so it's going to have multiple different items as uh, you should expect a large uh, IFAC would have. Multiple bandages, gauze, all that type of stuff. It's going to have probably more than I need for this particular setup. All right, so I have this set up into the truck and it is uh, set up in such a way that I do have it locked into place. That is my number one deterrent on having this stolen from my uh, truck. I have the steel braided cable routed through the trigger guard and around the optic as well and then locked into place with a master lock. Uh, that steel braided cable is plastic coated so it's not like I'm worried about marring up the uh, rifle itself. Even if I was to have a steel braided cable uh, I am not overly concerned about the finish on the rifle itself. I just need it to uh, sling rounds downrange to get me home. That is the biggest priority with this particular setup. All right, so the next thing that I have is a Tacticon Armament chest rig. Uh, that is going to have my three magazines for the rifle, two additional magazines for the pistol. So I have five magazines of rifle and three magazines for pistol. And that is going to be more than enough uh, for me to you know, defend myself in any given situation. What I can do from there is simply throw that over the rifle and allow it to dangle uh, from there. And yeah, no problems whatsoever. In addition to that, to help detour uh, any type of smash and grab, I have a poncho liner. This poncho liner is one that I have had since uh, my trip out to Wyoming. Uh, last year, I did make a trip out in April and there was still snow on the ground. And when you know it, I got stuck on my way out to my property in the snow and temperatures plummeted uh not too bad it was like 20 to 24 degrees overnight but uh that's still a lot colder than i would like to be stranded 
overnight. So I made sure that I have blankets with me at all times. I have a blanket that covers my rear seat and then I have the poncho liner as well. So uh, enough blankets for myself. And if there's someone with me, we can uh, uh, make sure that we're covered up and stay as warm as possible. So what I do is I take the poncho liner and I just take it and tuck it around the rifle rack system from Gray Man Tactical and that just kind of prevents anyone from seeing what I have. Finally, to help deter any type of theft of my property, I have tinted windows and I have it as dark as I possibly can in my state. Uh, other states have different requirements as to how much light can get in, but I can tell you just by walking by right here, all they're going to see is uh, camouflage something or other on the back of my seat and at early morning hours or late at night in the afternoon, it's going to be extremely difficult to see into my truck to see what is actually in there with my tinted windows. So I have three deterrents. Number one is I have my rifle locked up. Number two is I have a cover for what I have in my vehicle. And then number three, I have tinted windows as well. The fourth fourth thing that I will say is anytime that I go into a major city, uh, anything that is probably, I would say, over 100,000 in population, I completely change my entire setup. I make sure that things are secured differently. I make sure that those things are out of sight and more difficult to even see to begin with. And, um, I'm not going to share that with you guys because uh, my truck is kind of easy to pick out in a crowd. So if I'm doing videos and someone sees my truck, they're like, hey, he did a video about him having some firearms in his vehicle. I'm going to go and smash and grab it. Well, I change things up on a regular basis. This is how I have it set up right now. When I go into larger metropolis areas, then I change that up to make sure that I'm as secure as I possibly can. I don't leave my firearms in the vehicle overnight. Uh, so that is one less thing to worry about. And uh, as I go on shorter or longer trips, obviously the loadout is changed as well. So that is my uh, setup with my truck and how I have things uh, for my firearms. We are going to do other videos to talk about the rooftop tent that I have. Uh, obviously, I've got some utensils and tools on my truck. I have different types of setups when it can, comes to uh, long trips. I have gear that is going to be in the vehicle on a regular basis uh, for you know, just emergency type situations. If it's winter time and I get stuck somewhere, I have the ability to have additional items with me at all times. And these are just going to be kind of bare minimum type things. So we'll do that in a follow-up video as well. In addition to that, we're also going to be looking at this rifle in a little bit more uh, thorough capacity. So we're going to be looking at accuracy, uh, why I've chosen LPVOs to go with my truck gun and so on and so forth in future videos as well. So with that being said, I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Thanks so very much for checking things out. If you haven't checked out the Live Laugh LARP podcast, I encourage you guys to do that. That's going to be down in the pinned comment. Love to hear what you guys have to think about my particular setup and what are you doing to make sure that you're able to get home each and every single day. I would love to hear that as well. As always, here comes a high five. Freedom through strength. We'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy, y'all. Bye.